Good morning, everyone. It's Mother Susan Nastarita. I'm um, St. Peter's Del Mar, pastoral associate there. Uh, St. Peter's, for those of you uh, joining us for the first time, is in downtown Del Mar at 15th and Camino Del Mar. Uh, we would like to see you sometimes. Uh, and when you can join us online, we are very glad to have you. This morning, we are remembering a Saint, uh, Josephine Margaret Bahita. For us, she is a holy woman in the Episcopal Anglican Church. She has also been canonized in the Catholic Church. Hers was a life of faith, of fortitude, of perseverance, of suffering. She was born in the Sudan and she died in 1949. So her life has overlapped the lives of many of us or at least our parents and grandparents. This is not something that happened long ago and far away. This is a fairly modern story and it the her life and the story of her life tells itself. So let us begin. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest we shall be saved in quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns one God forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. O God of love, who delivered your servant, Josephine Margaret Bakita, from the bondage of slavery to the true freedom of your service. Grant to the wounded your healing grace in mind, body, and spirit, and to your church, zeal to combat exploitation and slavery in all its forms, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. I am now rejoicing in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am completing what is lacking in Christ's afflictions for the sake of his body, that is, the church. I became its servant according to God's commission that was given to me for you to make the word of God fully known, the mystery that has been hidden throughout the ages and generations but has now been revealed to his saints. To them, God chose to make known how great among the Gentiles are the riches of the glory of this mystery, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. It is he whom we proclaim, warning everyone and teaching everyone in all wisdom, so that we may present everyone mature in Christ. For this I toil and struggle with all the energy that he powerfully inspires within me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 91. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High abides under the shadow of the Almighty. He shall say to the Lord, You are my refuge and my stronghold, my God in whom I put my trust. He shall deliver you from the snare of the hunter and from the deadly pestilence. He shall cover you with his pinions, and you shall find refuge under his wings. His faithfulness shall be a shield and a buckler. You shall not be afraid of any terror by night, nor of the arrow that flies by day. Of the plague that stalks in the darkness, nor of the sickness that lays waste at midday. A thousand shall fall at your side and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Your eyes have only to behold 
to see the reward of the wicked. Because you have made the Lord your refuge and the Most High your habitation. There shall no evil happen to you, neither shall any plague come near to your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. They shall bear you in their hands, lest you dash your foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. You shall trample the young lion and the serpent under your feet. Because he is bound to me in love, therefore I will deliver him. I will protect him because he knows my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. I am with him in trouble. I will rescue him and bring him to honor. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. The Holy Gospel for this day is from the Gospel Ler, Luke, the 18th chapter, the first to the eighth verse. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Told, Jesus told the disciples a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city, there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city, there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while, he refused. But later, he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because of this widow who keeps on bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge said. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. This morning in our time together, um, let's take a moment to consider the life of Josephine Margaret Bakita. As I said in my first remarks, her life, I think the narrative of her life tells the story, speaks it without comment. She was born in 1869 and she died in 1947. She was a Sudanese Italian Canossian religious sister who was active in Italy for 45 years after having been a slave in Sudan. That's just the bare framework. She was born in Darfur in the village of El Gosa. Her family was respected and reasonably prosperous. Her father was the brother of the village chief. She was surrounded by a loving family, three brothers and three sisters. But sometime between the age of seven and nine, probably about 1877, she was seized by Arab slave traders who had already abducted her sister two years before. She was forced to walk barefoot about 600 miles. Yes, I said that, barefoot 600 miles to El Obiad and was sold and bought twice before she arrived at her destination. 
Over the course of 12 years, 1877 to 1889, she was sold three more times and then given away. Bakita was not the name given to her at birth by her parents. It is said that the trauma of her abduction caused her to forget her own name. She forgot her own name. And she took one, ironically, a name given to her by her slavers, by her oppressors. And the name was Bakita, which is Arabic for lucky or fortunate. In Obeid, Bakita was bought by a rich Arab who used her as a maid for two daughters. They liked her and they treated her well. Her fourth owner was a Turkish general and she had to serve his mother-in-law and his wife. They both were very cruel to their slaves. By the end of 1882, El Oviad came under the threat of an attack of a group of rev revolutionaries, which you may have heard of, the Mahdists, and the Turkish general prepared to go back home and sold his slaves. And then she was bought once again by the Italian vice council, a Mr. Legnani, who treated her kindly and did not beat or punish her. Two years later, they escaped from Khartoum, which was besieged at the time, and they traveled to Swakin, which is the largest port in the Sudan. In 1885, they left for Italy. And again, ownership of Bakita was transferred to a Signora Maria Michele. Bakita's new owners took her to their family near Venice. So you may have um, kept track of the number of times that Kita was bought and sold. When her owners went back to the Sudan in 1888, she was left in the care of the Kenosian sisters in Venice. They cared for her and taught her, and she encountered Christianity for the first time. And in 1889, the Italian court ruled that Bakita had never legally been a slave. She chose to remain with the Kenosians. She was baptized with the name Josephine Margaret Fortunata, and she entered the novitiate and took her vows in 1896. That's just the beginning of the story. Because for the next 40, Two years, 42 years, she was employed in God's faithful service for the sisters as a cook, as a sacristan, as a doorkeeper, as someone who engaged the community. She was known for her gentleness, her calm voice, her ever present smile. The smile, we're told, was especially well-known, especially well-known. And she had a special charisma and reputation for holiness. 
these two things were noticed by the order of the Canossians. And she became very, very famous in Italy when her story was published. Unfortunately, her last years, she was in pain and she was sick, but we're also told that she never lost her cheerfulness. Her body was on display for three days and thousands of people arrived to pay her respects. So about this point, we would consider her legacy. I think uh, the way she touches each of us will be a little bit different. The moments of grace in her life that we perceive will be different for each of us as we consider her story. We will rejoice in that part of the story that brought her deliverance and in those people who chose to leave her with the sisters and we will honor the sisters who taught her and cared for her. She's been adopted as the patron saint of Sudan and she is also the patron saint of human trafficking survivors. Amen. We continue our service of healing for anyone who may be wounded uh, spiritually, uh, mentally, emotionally, anyone who needs healing. We're here on this day to remember all those people. When we are in person, we come together at the altar, and I usually say that you're invited to come for the healing oil. If uh, you know someone who needs healing or for yourself, so you could present for yourself or present for others, you know, who need God's healing, love, and touch. So I'll give you a moment to bring those names to mind. And we'll begin the litany this morning. Let us name before God those for whom we offer our prayers. God the Father, your will for all people is health and salvation. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Son, you came that we might have life, and we might have it more abundantly. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. God the Holy Spirit, you make our bodies the temple of your presence. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Holy Trinity, one God, in you we live and move and have our being. We praise you and thank you, O Lord. Lord, grant your healing grace to all who are sick, injured, or recovering, that they may be made whole. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to all who seek your guidance and to all who are lonely, anxious, or despondent, a knowledge of your will and an awareness of your presence. Hear us, O Lord of life. Mend broken relationships and restore those in emotional distress to soundness of mind and serenity of spirit. Hear us, O Lord of life. The last physicians, nurses, paramedics, first responders, all who minister to the suffering, granting them wisdom and skill, sympathy, and patience. Hear us, O Lord of life. Grant to the dying peace and a holy death, and uphold by the grace and consolation of your Holy Spirit, 
those who are bereaved. Hear us, O Lord of life. Restore to wholeness whatever is broken by human sin in our lives, in our nation, and in the world. Hear us, O Lord of life. You are the world who does wonders. You have declared your power among the peoples. With you, O Lord, is the well of life. And in your light we see light. Hear us, O Lord of life. Heal us and make us whole. Let us pray. Almighty God, giver of life and health, send your blessing on all who are sick and upon those who minister to them, that all weakness may be vanquished by the triumph of the risen Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors. As we are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Amen. Oh my God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of God goes through. And also with you. At this point, we would have the laying on of hands and anointing. Um, we will do that virtually, and this is how. I have the holy oil here, and um, I will make the sign of the cross on my own forehead, and I would ask you to make the sign on yours, and by the, help, the power of the Holy Spirit, uh, we will carry out the anointing in the name of Christ. So, I anoint you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty Lord, who is a strong tower to all who put their trust in him, to whom all things in heaven on earth and under the earth bow and obey, be now and evermore your defense and make you know and feel that the only name under heaven given for health and salvation is the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And now let us pray in the words that our Lord Jesus Christ has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God. In the blessing of the Trinity be with you, God our Creator, God's Son our Redeemer, and the Holy Spirit our Sustainer. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God.